husband and I once slept on our barn floor for 10 consecutive nights. In the morning, we pick the hay out of our hair, shower up, dress, go to our day jobs, which at the time for Dan was principal of the Nadnock Regional High School, and for me, director of religious education at the Keene Unitarian Universalist Church. This spring, it will be 18 years since that adventure, and I'm the only one left to tell the full story of those 10 nights. <laughs> Here's the background you need to know. In 1978, we fulfilled our daughter, our daughter Carolyn's dream of having a horse and bought her a horse. A couple years later, we bred the horse, and thus Angel came into our life. After Carolyn left for college, Dan and Angel took up Jim Canna riding. If you don't know what that is, it's the rootin' tootin' cowboy stuff where you race around barrels and weave in and out of poles, all timed events. By the time our youngest child, Michael, was six, he was riding Angel's mom and competing in Jim Canna horse shows with his dad who was riding Angel. In 1988, Dan and Angel, Dan was New Hampshire State Jim Canna champion, riding Angel. He always gave Angel the credit for that championship. <laughs> In 1997, by 1997, Angel's mom was gone, and Dan decided, for whatever reason, to breed Angel. It wasn't successful. That spring, my dad died. The next spring, Dan decided to try again, and again, the breeder said it wasn't successful, and now at age 17, it probably was too late. A month later, Dan's dad died. Six months later, his mom died. Three months later, my mom died. There were too many losses in too short a time. It was a really hard time. Then one day, about a month after my mom died, Dan came in from the barn and said, would you come out and look at Angel with me? So I go out. He stands there and says, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say Angel's pregnant. And I said, oh, she's always got a hay belly at this time of year. Yeah, but look at her teats, he says. So I oblige. <laughs> you know, I really don't look at her teats that often. I don't know what they're supposed to be. <laughs> oh, he said, I probably just want something good to happen so badly. But about a week later, there was no doubt. We saw clear movement in her, in her belly. Get out the calendar. Refer back to the unsuccessful breeding. And she's due. She's going to give birth any moment. So we're back to the 10 consecutive nights in the barn floor. <laughs> we were not going to miss that birth for anything. This was a miracle, and we were going to live it fully. So one night, our son Michael came home from Middlebury to do vigil with us in the barn. And he brought a classmate. Um, he seemed like a nice kid. He'd been raised in um, New York City, but he, he just seemed a little odd. For some reason, he didn't want to sleep out on the cold after <laughs> the iron floor with the rest of us. So listening to the barred owls hooting in the tree and the mice scampering across in the loft, he chose to sleep in our warm, comfortable guest room in the house. <laughs> you know, it did occur to me fleetingly in there somewhere, oh, maybe we do live a little bit of an alternative lifestyle. <laughs> anyway, a few evenings later, Angel gave birth to a perfect replica of herself. It was the most, uh, there aren't even words, it was the most surreal, amazing, miraculous, wonderful event. And the next morning when the vet came to check Angel and the foal, um, she, knowing what we'd been through the last couple of years, suggested the name Phoenix Rising. Perfect. Well, have you heard the, or read the poster that says, live life as if someone left the gate open? Man, we plunged through that gate and brought all our friends with us, and it was the most amazing spring. Every day, people would be there sitting on the grass with us, smelling the apple blossoms, and watching that little filly cavort around her mom on long, spindly legs, which reminded me when um, Michael was four, and he saw pictures of Angel when she was a few days old. He said, oh, there's Angel when she was a goat. <laughs> So those 
spindly legs were really something, though. And if you could have seen her even at two days old, the agility and the, and the way she could pivot, it looked as if she'd be a champion like her mom. But at five weeks, tragedy struck. Dan and Carolyn and Michael were out in the lawn watching Angel and Phoenix eating grass. And unbeknownst to us, there was a little wire that was left out um, coming out of a tree. We had a zip line in previous years going through. And Phoenix was doing her racing, galloping stuff, and her hoof got caught in the wire. And she ran for quite a way before she realized that the hoof had been torn off. Sorry. We urgently called vets all over the state, called Tufts Medical, but no one had any hope of reattachment. So the vet had to come put her down. Angel was inconsolable. Um, that night, Dan and I lay there listening to her crying and calling from the barn. And I realized that I had a choice. Every moment of our lives, we have choice. And I knew that I could remember Phoenix for the tragedy that unexpectedly can come on any given day. Or I could remember her that on any given day, miraculous, unexpected joy could come. I chose to remember joy.